Action. Where, where did our wonderful bartender go? Laura? Yes, we went to high school together. Yeah. So I am local. I'm a proud Spirit Lake Elementary and Lakeland High grad. Um, so I'm always excited to come home. And I'm really excited to come home these days because our daughter, Alex, lives here and practices law in Coeur d'Alene and all through North Idaho. And you may remember last year that I introduced Alex and her boyfriend at the time, Tristan, and, and he was fixing to move to North Idaho from Nashville area, and he's a prosecutor. And uh, I said something about, you know, he needs to put a ring on the finger. Well, that happened. They're engaged, they'll be getting married here next year, and Tristan has moved uh, here and is in the Kootenai County Prosecutor's Office, a felony prosecutor there. So, you guys stand up, say hi. Alex and Tristan, they're two local kids. All right, so, very briefly, two things. One, the adjudication. Two, the Avista Hydro One merger. Uh, first, on the adjudication front, since we met last year, the appeals have gone up to the Idaho Supreme Court on the tribal claims. What the tribe in the United States are arguing, and we are in pitch battle with a army of attorneys from the United States that come out from Washington, D.C., and Denver, and Portland, and then the tribe has now hired attorneys uh, out of Washington, D.C., and uh, Albuquerque, uh, formerly from Portland. Uh, they don't just have local attorneys involved anymore, they're bringing in an army too. So we met in Boise in uh, November. We had oral argument for four hours over two days, six different attorneys in front of the five justices of the Idaho Supreme Court. And we're waiting for the decision to be issued, hopefully any day. And that decision is gonna deal with all the 350 plus claims that have been filed by the United States on behalf of the tribe. Now fortunately, in front of Judge Wildman, when the arguments were done in Coeur d'Alene early last year, we were able to get the United States to stipulate to two things that are very important. The tribe didn't necessarily agree with this, but these things were reflected in the judge's decision and I don't think are going to be um, decided a different way in the appeal. They really weren't even raised. Number one, the tribe, the United States on behalf of the tribe, will have no water right claims outside of the current reservation boundaries. There was some question about it, there will be none. Number two, we all know, most of us know about the US Supreme Court opinion with regard to submerged lands uh, in the lake on the reservation. The tribe has always maintained that they own the lake outside of the reservation, the rest of the lake. The U.S. stipulated that that's not the case, and the court recognized that in a footnote in the opinion, and again, is not subject to appeal. So ownership of the lake outside the reservation, the tribe and the United States have, are gonna have no claim to that after we're done with this adjudication. So what are we dealing with? We're dealing with the things that you would think about if you live in a certain place and you need water to drink or to make a go of it, to do your business, those are issues on the reservation. And the only issue there is do they have rights to groundwater versus surface water, and the court will, will decide that. The bigger issue is on the rest of the reservation, particularly uh, the tributaries that flow into the lake, is there an in-stream flow? Will there be a minimum level in the lake for the benefit of the United States and the tribe? Those things, those minimum stream flows, that lake level, that will dictate whether your water use in the tributaries from the springs that feed the tributaries that ultimately feed these minimum stream flows, which are virtually impossible to meet in the summer, whether that's gonna mean you're shut off because your right is junior and inferior to that right. The court will decide whether the United States and the tribe have those kinds of rights or not. We've argued very strenuously they don't. The state of Idaho has argued very strenuously that they don't, but the tribe and the United States have argued very strongly that they do. And we're gonna have to wait to see where the court comes down on those issues. So that's where that stands. We should get a decision every day. Any day we've made great progress, but we still got a ways to go. So thanks to NWPOA, the North Idaho Water Rights Alliance, the 
Coeur d'Alene Lake Shore Property Owners Alliance, uh, the Hagedon Hospitality, and also Wrath from Power. They're all members of this coalition, and what Jeff said earlier is absolutely true. There is strength in numbers. We could not, you could not, none of you individually could fight the federal government in this fight without all of the rest of you being involved. They know that, they notice it, they see that we're still at the table, that we're still in the courtroom, and I'm sure they're wondering how we make this go. But we, we do, and we will continue the fight clear until the end to make sure that our property rights in North Idaho are safeguarded.